In the first four chapters of Red Dead Redemption 2, we've been granted a fascinating look at Rockstar Games' recreation of the Western, Midwestern, and Southern United States, all through the lens of an outlaw gang in 1899. From Coulter to Valentine and Rhodes to Saint Denis, we followed the fascinating historical connections demonstrating life in the late 19th century. In Chapter 5, however, the gang are no longer in the United States. After a bank robbery gone wrong, some of them stow away on a ship heading to Cuba, and are soon shipwrecked on the island of Guama, an island with an equally fascinating history to that of the United States. So let's take a look at the real history of Red Dead Redemption 2. After Arthur miraculously manages to meet up with some of the gang, Dutch explains where they are. We are on the island of Guam. Guam seems to be an amalgamation of several Caribbean islands. One of these is Cuba, despite the fact that Cuba also exists in the game. As discussed previously, Guam was the location of the Battle of San Juan Hill, led by Colonel Thaddeus Waxman. In real life, the Battle of San Juan Hill took place on Cuba, led by Colonel Theodore Roosevelt. It's a old sugar plantation island. Now, sugar plantations were a significant part of the Caribbean economy from the 18th to 20th centuries. In fact, by the late 1700s, the world center of sugar was considered to be San Domingue, now known as Haiti. By 1789, it was the wealthiest and most prosperous colony in the Caribbean, producing around 40% of the total sugar imported by Britain and France. There were so many sugar plantations at the time that the slaves were managed by other slaves called commanders. Interestingly, it was around this time that the commanders of the rich sugar plantations gathered and swore an oath to rise up against their white owners, ultimately leading to the Haitian Revolution. Considering the fact that a similar uprising takes place on Guama in the game, partly assisted by Haitian pirates, a connection here would be unsurprising. It isn't long before the group are caught and forced to walk as a chain gang. Now the best known early usage of chain gangs was in the convict era of Australia, around 80 years onwards from the 1780s. They were introduced to the US after the Civil War as a way for free work to be performed by prisoners. They were abolished in every state by the 1950s. In one of the next missions on Guama, Arthur and Dutch seek to free Javier from the compound at Agua Dolce. Interestingly, the compound bears a striking resemblance to the Cafetal La Isabelica, a two-story mansion located in southeast Cuba. The building was constructed in the early 19th century as a coffee plantation. It became a museum in the 1960s, and alongside some other remaining coffee plantations, was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2000. To distract the attention of the guards, Dutch causes an explosion in the warehouse using sugar and dust. This has actually happened several times. One somewhat recent example, possibly one that Dutch was aware of, was in Chicago in March 1890, where a sugar refinery explosion killed nine and injured at least 17. In more modern times, a sugar refinery explosion in February 2008 killed 14 and injured 36 in Port Wentworth, Georgia. In another mission, as Arthur is seeking to help the Guaman rebels, he is shot with a tranquilizer dart. Now the origin of these may well be related to that of the poison arrow, which is thought to have existed for thousands of years, but the history of hypnotic drugs, those typically intended to initiate or sustain sleep, is much more recent. The first to be used specifically as a hypnotic was actually introduced in the 1800s. Now these typically don't take effect immediately, at the very least they usually take a few minutes but I guess the game deserves credit for not having it be instant. Unfortunately, we don't actually see what is used to shoot the dart at Arthur, but I think it's safe to assume that it's a blowgun, which had existed for at least hundreds of years. At the very least, we know it wasn't a tranquilizer gun, since these wouldn't exist for another 60 years. In the 1950s, New Zealander Colin Murdoch wanted a better way to capture and restrain animals, and thus the modern tranquilizer gun was born. There are a few minor things said in this mission that are of some interest. One of the guards describes Guama as the island God forgot. Interestingly, this is a term used by Charles B. Stilson in his 1922 book of the same name, but in it he's referring to islands in the Pacific, not the Caribbean. A little later, one of the guards suggests that they go check if the American has squealed yet. The word squeal has existed for some time, with the meaning to cry out originating as early as around 1300. 
but as a reference to inform on another person. This was first recorded in 1865, so fairly recent compared to its usage here. The next mission is called Hell Hath No Fury. This is a bit of an old phrase, originating in 1697 in the play The Morning Bride by English playwright William Congreve. Interestingly, it was said a little differently on its first usage. Heaven has no rage, like love to hatred turned, nor hell a fury, like a woman scorned. In this mission, Arthur and the gang meet Hercule at Cinco Torres, a former military fort. Based on its appearance and location, it might be fair to assume that the fort is based on Morro Castle, a fortress that guards the entrance to the harbour in Havana, Cuba. Morro Castle was built in the late 1500s and early 1600s as a response to raids on the city, and the capture of the fortress in 1762 led to temporary British occupation of the city. While it wasn't used for anything this significant afterwards, it wasn't completely abandoned, like Cinco Torres on Guama. A lighthouse was added in the 1840s, and the castle can still be visited today. Hercule tells the gang that they'll be forced to wait a little while longer before leaving. Fuso has called in the navy from Cuba. Interestingly, the game actually takes place in the brief period in which Cuba was under the rule of the United States. In 1898, President McKinley signed a resolution asserting the US's control over Cuba, and a military government was installed on the 1st of January 1899. The Constitution of the Republic of Cuba wasn't adopted until 1901, and took effect in 1902. So when Colonel Fusar calls in the Navy from Cuba, he's likely corresponding with the military government of the US in Cuba, which makes sense considering his connection to the mayor and Angelo Bronte in Saint Denis. It soon becomes clear exactly what Fusar called in from Cuba. That's a goddamn warship! Of course, the warship isn't fully modelled, but it appears to be an ironclad warship, which makes sense around this time. The first ocean-going ironclad was launched in 1859, and the first use of ironclads in action was during the American Civil War in 1861. In 1862, the first battle between ironclads took place at the Battle of Hampton Roads in Virginia. This had an immediate effect on navies around the world, leading to the increased development of ironclads. So the fact that one appears in Guama 37 years later is entirely unsurprising. In the last mission on Guama, there's one minor comment worth noting. They got him trussed up like a hog. There are several alternatives to this phrase. One of the earliest and most common is trussed up like a turkey, which appears at least as early as 1893. Trussed up like a hog appears as early as 1905 and an alternative with chicken as early as 1912. But of course, as all informal phrases go, it's near impossible to track their exact first usage. Back in the United States, Arthur finds the gang held up in La Caye, a small area southeast of La Gras. Its close proximity to La Gras makes sense too. In Haitian Creole, the word La Caye means home. In this area, the player can find a shrunken head, an artifact that is typically used for ritual or trophy purposes and commonly associated with voodoo. With most of the gang back together, some choice words are said. Cheerful nymph of the prairie, wasn't you, Abigail? Now, a nymph is a minor female deity in ancient Greek folklore, generally regarded as a personification of nature. Hence, Mike is saying that Abigail is the nymph of the prairie, the prairie being an area of grassland commonly associated with the American West. Interestingly, but almost certainly unrelated, the prairie nymph is the name of a flower native to South America and the southern United States. Unfortunately, it doesn't take long for the Pinkertons to find the gang's hideout. Notice how Agent Milton describes the state of West Elizabeth. On behalf oh, of shit. Cornwall, Kerosene and Tor, and the Commonwealth of West Elizabeth- Here we go. This is interesting, since it seems to be the only time it's referred as such in the game. Only four of the 50 states in the US use the name Commonwealth, Kentucky, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. These titles are maintained from when they were granted statehood, but they're mostly used symbolically as a way to demonstrate that the states have a government based on the common consent of the people. According to Agent Milton, I guess West Elizabeth is one of those. This mission is the first time we really see how brutal the Pinkertons are and how desperate Milton is becoming. Give them to a count of five, then give them everything. Actually, let him have it. This likely isn't based off of nothing. 
In real life, Alan Pinkerton, the founder and leader of the organization, took on the case of outlaw Jesse James as a personal vendetta. In January 1875, the Pinkertons, led by Mr. Pinkerton himself, threw an incendiary device into James's homestead, but he wasn't home. Instead, the explosion killed his younger half-brother Archie and blew off the right arm of his mother Zerelda. Pinkerton continued to deny that it was intentional arson, but several years later, biographer Ted Yeatman found a letter written by Pinkerton declaring his intention to burn the house down. Sounds like a familiar character. I shall hunt you to the ends of the earth and the end of time! In this mission, the Pinkertons bring, and Arthur later commandeers, a Maxim gun. Now, while the mission objectives refer to this correctly, the game's gold medal objectives refer to this as a Gatling gun, as does Sadie. Get on that Gatling gun, Arthur! And it's understandable. They're similar looking guns capable of firing continuously. However, a Gatling gun is hand cranked, whereas a Maxim gun, as seen in the game, is fully automatic. It was designed by Sir Hiram Stevens Maxim, patented in 1883, demonstrated in 1884, and first used in warfare in the 1880s and 1890s. So its usage here is perfectly appropriate, despite the mix-up of the name. At the start of Chapter 5's final mission, Arthur finds Dutch reciting a famous chess move. White to d4, black to f5. Fittingly, this is actually known as the Dutch Defense. This specific move is a semi-Leningrad variation. It was first recommended in 1789 in a book by Elias Stein and has been described as one of the spiciest, most aggressive openings in chess, a suitable description for the man of the same name. In this mission, Dutch tasks Arthur and Charles with finding a suitable location for a camp at Roanoke Ridge. Like most locations in the game, Roanoke Ridge is likely an amalgamation of different real-life areas. Geographically, it's likely based on the US interior highlands the Washita Mountains and Ozark Plateaus, one of the few mountainous regions between the Western Rocky Mountains and the Eastern Appalachian Mountains, located north of New Orleans in Louisiana, just as Roanoke Ridge is north of Saint-Denis in Lemoyne. In terms of its name, history, and demography though, Roanoke Ridge is a little closer to the cultural region known as Appalachia in the Eastern United States. First and foremost, the name Roanoke is closely associated with several areas in Appalachia, it's the name of an independent city in the state of Virginia, Roanoke Colony was an attempted English settlement in North Carolina, and the Roanoke were a group of indigenous people, also located in North Carolina. To outsiders, Appalachia is most frequently associated with the coal mining industry. After the Civil War, industrialization and railroad expansion brought more demand for coal, and despite the industry being vulnerable to labor strife and economic downturns, as well as injuries and death, it largely prevailed until innovations in mechanization after World War II forced a decline in mining in the region. Today, the mining industry employs around 2% of the Appalachian workforce. In the game, one location frequently associated with the coal mining industry is, unsurprisingly, Roanoke Ridge, especially in the town of Annisburg, which we see towards the end of this mission. Now similar to the mining town of Coulter seen at the beginning of the game, Annisburg is a coal town, as the name suggests, it's a type of town whose population consists mostly of miners and related workers. Annisburg itself could be inspired by any number of the many coal towns on or near the Mississippi River, just as Annisburg itself sits along the Lanahassee River. One notable example of one such town, though not quite as close to the Mississippi, is that of Buxton, Iowa, founded in 1895 by Ben Buxton, president of Consolidation Coal Company. By the early 20th century, it was the largest coal town west of the Mississippi, with houses, schools, parks, a department store, a post office, a baseball team, and more. After the peak of coal production in 1914 though, residents started to leave. By 1919, only 400 people remained. By 1932, the final mine was closed. And by 1936, the tracks and most buildings were removed. Perhaps Annisburg will see a similar fate after the events of the game. Also in this mission, Arthur and Charles encounter the Murphy Brood, a savage group known for being incredibly vicious and territorial. Now these could be based on any number of murderous clans, fictional or otherwise, and mostly cannibalistic, though the Murphy Brood are not explicitly so. One such possibly fictional example is Sawney Bean, who was the head of a 45-member clan in 16th century Scotland, said to have murdered and cannibalized more than 1,000 people over 25 years. 
At the end of the mission, Grimshaw demands that the gang get back to work. Quit your lollygagging! The first known usage of the word lollygag was in 1862, so well before the events here, but it was actually once used to refer specifically to displays of affection or lovemaking. I don't think that's how Grimshaw intended it here. Get back to work! In Red Dead Redemption 2, Rockstar has already proven its talent in recreating the geography and history of the United States in 1899. In Chapter 5, it went one step further with the island of Guama, a recreation of several Caribbean islands, including the country of Cuba, not to mention even more history with La Caye, Roanoke Ridge, and Annisburg. But now the gang are based within Roanoke Ridge, and as if it wasn't bad enough already, things have taken a turn for the worse and the historical connections are about to get even more interesting. Mm -hmm.